So I titled my sermon, Choose a Side. If you have a Bible, open it up to Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. Father God, we love you and we worship you today, Lord. We know that you are almighty. You're all not present, Father. You are here right now, Father God. You're all nipping it. You know everything, Father God. You know our past. You know our hurts. You know our stories. You know what we're thinking right now, God. You know that that clip that we just watched has convicted our soul in such a way that we know that that's us, that we need to choose a side. Father God, penetrate our souls today by the conviction of the Word of God to choose to live for you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Verse 19 says, I call heaven and earth as witness today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. I call heaven and earth as witness today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Therefore, choose life that you may live. So you have two choices today. You either can choose to live or you can choose to die. The choice to live is to live for Christ, to sell out your whole heart to Jesus Christ. In in everything that you do, in your job, in your house, and especially in your marriage, in your family, in everything that you do, you have a choice to make today to choose which side you shall serve. You have a choice. The whole sermon is wrapped around this first set of scriptures. Who will you serve when you leave out of these doors today? Will you choose today to serve Jesus Christ and his kingdom and his glory? Will you choose to be baptized in the power of the Holy Spirit in the water as a picture of your salvation? Will you choose today to be a man of God, to stand for your family, to stand as the the spiritual director of your family with your witness, with your example Not with an iron fist, but with what 1 Corinthians 13 says, without being rude, without being puffed up, without being self-seeking. Joshua 24 verse 15 says this, And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river are the gods of the Amorites on whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, We will serve the Lord. You have to make that decision today. For me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I'm telling you today, I'm preaching to you today, you must choose a side. You must choose a side whom you will serve. You must choose life or death. Choose life and live or choose death and do nothing. And allow your life to continue to dwell in that misery that it is. Hold the gun up to your head at night. But take the drugs, take the alcohol, take the gossip, take the whatever it is that you're dwelling on. Take your thoughts and just, just bask in your thoughts over and over and over. And allow them to say you're not good enough. You're not pretty enough. You're ugly. You're not smart enough. You'll never be a man. You'll never be. You can bask in those all day long if you choose death. That is the choice that you've chosen. But I'm telling you, I'm preaching today for you to choose life and life more abundantly. As she shared that scripture in John 10, 10, that the devil has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But God said, I have come to give you life. Amen. The devil is the one that has come to steal your glory, to steal your victory, to steal your joy, to steal your peace. But Jesus Christ has come to give you life, to give you that peace, to give you that joy, to give you an an inner peace that surpasses the understanding of this world. That a lot of us can't grasp because we have chosen death. We have chosen to dwell on our thoughts. We have chosen to dwell in the, the pity party of our own selfishness. We have chosen death. We don't even realize that we have chosen this death. But I'm telling you today, by the preaching of the word, if you're constantly basking in these thoughts and dwelling in these thoughts, you are choosing death. Stop. God is begging you and pleading to you with you today. Throw the gun down. Throw the addiction down. Throw whatever it is down. On Thursdays at 7 o'clock, we have a a Celebrate Recovery. We have an opportunity that you can come and be a part of of a healing process. That you can choose to show up on Thursdays at 7 o'clock and take the process of healing. It's It's a choice. You've made a choice today to come to church today. You've chosen today to come to church today. I bet you didn't think you were going to get all this, did you? 
No man can serve, listen to this, Matthew 6, 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve God and yourself. You cannot serve God and your addictions. You cannot serve God and your wicked thoughts. You cannot, you have to make a choice that I stand today. I will not be tore down. I will not be destroyed. I will not be rebuked. I will not be addicted. I will not be tormented by Satan no longer. You are a warrior in the army of Jesus Christ. So who are you? You are a warrior in the army of Jesus. If you're a Christian, you are a Christ warrior. He is, his, he is your commanding officer. And he is commanding you to stand up, to rise up, to come out of mediocrity, come out of, the, of complacent, come out of dwelling on those thoughts over and over and over. Choose whom you will serve today. That's what I'm telling you. You cannot serve man and God. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other. You must choose today whom you shall serve. This last year, I've seen so many people make this decision. I've seen so many marriages rescued, so many lives rescued, so many people overcoming alcohol and drugs and addiction, and maybe even hurts of losing a loved one. And they've dwelled in it for years and years and years, and they've gone to that point where they've been down there and with the gun in their head and their mouth, and they've been to that point where just giving up, and, and they, they just said, I'm ready to make a change. Like the, the couple said, we need some saving. We need some saving, Amen. They came down and made a choice. They made a decision that we are no longer going to dwell in the world. We're no longer going to, to bask in this world of evil. No longer the family that came down and rededicated their life to the Lord. They said, we're sick and tired of being tormented by Satan. We're sick and tired of allowing the devil to win the battle in our life. We come today making a choice to serve our Savior, to serve our risen Savior. How long have you been a Christian with lack of peace, with lack of victory? How long have you served God in, 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 a, in, a, in a wicked state of mind? How long have you been going to church over and over and over and playing in religion? How long have you just been going to church and going through the emotions? Jesus Christ is real and he is alive. God is alive. Life is full of choices. Living a godly life is a moment by moment choice. A moment by moment choice. Living a godly life is a moment-by-moment choice. It's your choice every day whether you will choose to live or whether you will choose to die. Every person chooses their own destiny. God has given you a destiny, but you must choose to, to embrace the destiny that God has for you. Your destiny is in your hands. If you choose death, then you have lost it. But if you choose life, you receive it with all of God's glory. If you chose life, you chose all of God's promises and favor and blessings he has to bestow upon you. But if you choose death, you have chose cursings and death and all the many plagues of the Old Testament and New Testament. Testament. As Deuteronomy 30 verse 19 says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I've set before you life and death, blessings and curses. I beg of you today to choose life. If you're not saved, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I know that very, that where that girl was. I've been there. I've fought that fight. I remember the day that I got saved and, and had to fight to get to God. I remember, but I made a choice to fight. I made a choice to give my life to Jesus Christ and hell shall not prevail no more. I made a choice to live for God. And I'm pleading with you today to make that same choice. If you've never given your life, I was in adultery, I was in in, in drugs, I was in all these areas of sin. But when God called me, all the evil and dominion in the world tried to push me down and keep me from serving Jesus. But he is greater in me than he's greater than in this world. When I ask Christ to come inside of my heart, he that lives in me is greater than he that lives in this world. Amen. Woo! He... Like, I can do all things through Jesus Christ who gives me the strength. And I grab a hold of that scripture, Philippians 4.13, and I embrace that scripture now. That I can overcome these sins. I can overcome these addictions. I can overcome these hurts. I can overcome these habits. I can overcome Satan. My foot is on his face now. Because it's not what I did, but it's what Jesus Christ did on Calvary. Amen. 
I call heaven and earth against you today. That you have a choice to make. You have to make these choices every day. When you're at work, when you're watching TV, when you're on vacation, when you're alone, when you're on the computer. I was studying my sermon last night at my house, going over my sermon. You think the devil is not going to try his best to manipulate me and keep me from standing up here and preaching the gospel in purity? My brother told me that this morning he was wearing a shirt with Christ crucified on it. And he said that he went to his closet and he wanted to wear it, but he knew there was something inside of him. And he just couldn't wear it, so he grabbed another one, walked out of there, and God said, Wait a minute. Wait one minute. Choose today who you shall serve. And he went back and he grabbed that shirt and he got on his knees. He said, God, whatever's convicting my heart, keep me not putting this shirt on. Take it from me. And today he's wearing that shirt. Amen. (laughs) He chose. It is a day by day. It is an everyday process. I'm sitting there studying on that computer last night. And there's this little thing over here. It's alert, alert, alert. Man, I just wanted to push it. It just kept going off and off and off. And it was just an alert button. That's all it was. But it was a distraction. It was a pull from Satan himself. Probably had a virus, wanted to download my whole computer and destroy everything that I was studying. But it was so... Kept zoning me out to it. It's like, I just... I'm one of those, if I see a red button, I got to push it kind of guys. Don't bring a red button around me. (laughs) And it was just, man, I just, I said, Lord, give me the strength not to push that thing. <laughs> and then, and then a naked, half naked lady in a bathing suit popped up over here right after I'm being drawn to that. And I beat that fight. And then another fight comes on. I'm just studying my sermon. I'm preaching these scriptures right here. I'm going on the word of God. You think the devil cares? He's going to fight you anywhere you go. You have to choose who you serve. I shut one eye, amen, so I couldn't see it. (laughs) Woo! 1 Peter 5, 8 says this. Be alert. Be alert. And be sober-minded. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking to someone he may devour. Looking for someone he may devour. Listen to that. Be alert. Be sober-minded. Man, I'm sitting there on that computer, and this scripture pops up. Woo! And I'm like, block. I rebuke you, devil. If you rebuke him, he will flee. And I got into my word, and I started studying the word. The kids come in there, what's wrong, dad, sometimes? I go, man, I just got excited about a scripture. I'm sorry. <laughs> just get excited. Just get excited about God's word. Get excited about what Jesus Christ is doing in your life. Choose who you shall serve. Man, it's exciting to serve Jesus Christ. You know what? I was a part of a, a, another church, and I'd walk in there, and, and I'd go in there, and I, there was no fire. It wasn't happening. And I kept saying, God, show me, show me. And then I said, Lord, when you give me my church, Lord, I want it to be fire. I want the Holy Spirit to move. I, I, want, I, but I want boundaries. I do want boundaries. But I, want, I don't want to quench the Spirit. I don't want to quench what God's doing. I don't want to keep somebody from getting saved. I don't want to keep a marriage from being rescued. I don't want to keep an alcoholic from being redeemed. I don't want to keep a drug addict. I want to keep the needle out of their arm. I, want to, I don't want to quench the Holy Spirit. I want to choose who I will serve. And I pray for this church right here. This church right here. For the whole band. For John Miles over here just strumming away the girls singing Devin and and, and Ken and and Teresa Woo! I prayed for that and God has revealed that and has opened that up and people are coming and being changed because why because me and Christy has chosen to serve Jesus Christ and allow him to flow through us to keep our marriage in unity to keep our life in one and in tune with Jesus Christ to keep our children in tune with the word of God Woo, we've made a choice. We have chosen. Be alert and be sober-minded. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. That means moment by moment, you must be alert. You must choose every day. When you go out and get in that car and somebody's negative, you must choose not to be negative with them. You must choose to be the example of Jesus Christ. You must choose to be the Christ example. When you leave and go to the restaurant and where, where the other person wants to go, you don't want to go. You got to say, let's go. That sounds wonderful. Amen. I don't like that place, but glory to God, we'll go and eat there. I'll hold my nose. I'll do whatever it takes. To keep unity in my family. To keep Christ centered in my life. I have to choose every moment of every day of my life. 
Yesterday, I, in the evening time, I got really cranky. I could feel it rising up inside me, which we didn't go to bed kind of late because we, we had a long night, and I kept studying, and Christy kept paying bills, and, and, then, and I just wanted to go to bed. And I felt this come over me, and I felt this negativity, and I said in my mind, I choose right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke this. I will go to sleep and shut my eyes without saying one wicked word. And my wife cuddles up to me and speaks in my life and loves me. I could have easily swayed. I could have easily moved that around. I could have easily chose to destroy our, our, our marriage that night. I could have said, get away from me. I don't want to talk. Just put all that up. I just want to go to bed. Leave me alone. But that's not the Christ example, is it? We all are going to be tired one day. We're all going to be excited one day. We're all going to be hurt one day. We're all going to be happy one day. But in those times of those storms, we must choose to still be like Christ. Amen? We must still be a Christian. So choose life that you may overcome your enemy. Remember this, Galatians 2.20. You have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer you who live, but Christ lives in you. And that which lives in you now lives by the flesh. You live by faith in the Son of God who loved you and gave himself for you. You now live in the flesh. You live by faith now. Listen to that. We still live in the flesh. We still have to be a part of the flesh. But now we live by faith in the Son of God who, who what did he do? Who loved us and gave himself for us. You are, a spirit, you are in a spiritual battle. You are in a spiritual battle against Satan for your life, against the enemy for your life. He longs to suck the life out of you. He longs to destroy your relationships. He longs to destroy your kids. It is up to you to make that decision to choose life. It is up to you today, if you do not know Jesus Christ, it is up to you today to choose your destiny, to choose to serve Jesus Christ, to choose to give your whole heart to the Lord. You must choose to serve God. And never accept defeat. When I do fail, which I do, I don't care what any pastor says, there's no perfect pastor. I do not accept defeat. Listen to that. Just because, fail, just because you failed, failure is not final. You never accept defeat. You never accept defeat. A righteous man may, a righteous man may fall, but he will rise back up. He may fall seven times, but he'll rise back up. But an unrighteous man will fall and he will stay there. But if you're a man of God, if you're a woman of Christ, then you will rise back up and you'll get back in that arena. And you will fight. As Paul said, I've fought the good fight of faith. I've laid hold on eternal life. Woo, there's treasures laid up for me in heaven. You must choose who you serve today. Ephesians 6, as we're getting to the end, Ephesians 6, verse 10 it says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The tricks of the devil. And the devil, what does the word devil mean? The accuser. He's the accuser. He goes before God and he says, if you'll take away this, they'll curse you. If you take away this, they'll curse you. God, this person's no good. Read the book of Job. He is the accuser. He is a trick. He tries to trick you, and then he tries to accuse you. You have to stand against him. You have to rise up. Finally, my brother, and be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. Verse 12, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness and heavenly places. What do you think? I was on that computer and I was studying. Who do you think was trying to do that to me? It wasn't the mother of nature. It wasn't some higher power. It was the enemy. He was trying to come against me to destroy me, to make me feel ashamed and guilty and say, there's no way I can stand up there and preach after dwelling on this. Make me push that button and allow all these things to be revealed to me. As Adam and Eve, as he, he, he swayed them and tricked them over and they ate of that tree. Woo! That same devil is doing it today. Amen. You must choose who you serve. If Eve would have said, no, you dirty snake, get out of here. We wouldn't have been in the mess of sin that we're in today, would we? Our Savior, our Lord and Savior wouldn't have to die and be crucified in such a way for our penalty. 
But Jesus Christ made a choice. He looked down upon His creation and He's seen us in pain and suffering. He's seen what sin has done to us. He's seen that torment that that young lady was being tormented in. And He said, I must choose to go down there and to rescue them. Amen? I must choose to rescue them. Today, if you need to be rescued, you come up to this altar and let Jesus Christ rescue you out of the pit of hell. Let Him put your feet up on a solid rock. Let Him put a new song in your mouth and let you be able to sing the praises of your Savior. Amen? Amen. Guys, I want to preach to you today. You have a choice to make today. If you're out there right now, if you're married and you've been literally just being tormented by each other, you're making the wrong choice. You are choosing to rebel. Rebellion is his witchcraft, the Bible says. Choose to serve God. Choose to love your partner. As 1 Corinthians 13 says, love is not rude. Love is not boastful. Love does not seek itself. Love does not seek its own. Love is not puffed up. It's okay. Let her paint the room yellow. It's okay. Let him go to the cowboy game. It's okay. You know, if to, to rebuke the sin, not the sinner. Love the person, love them, embrace them, grab a hold of them as Jesus Christ did you when he saved you. If your other spouse is not on the level of Christianity that you are, quit slapping them with the Bible. Give them an opportunity to grow as the Lord is growing them and working in them. Love them into the Lord as Jesus Christ loved you. Amen? It's a free counsel session right now. You must choose to learn to serve God and love God. And in that process, all every single person around you, you must choose to be an example of Jesus Christ. The way you win somebody to the Lord is by being like Christ, by being the example of Jesus Christ, by reading your Bible, get, getting into your prayer, getting into your worship and praise, and dwelling and, and, and literally embracing the Holy Spirit and everything that He has in store for you. Choose today to serve God. By you making this choice today, you will watch your whole family change. Our commander and our chief has already won the victory for us. You all have, have all you have to do is to get up, dress up, armor up, stand up, choose your side, and await for your marching orders. I want to tell you today that God has given you a marching order today. To choose whom you shall serve. For me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, they're going to come up and they're going to sing. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. At this time, please stand. If you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, all the mighty warriors, please come up. If you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, today is the day to make that choice. If you haven't made a decision in your family to choose to serve God together as unity, as unified, today is that day to make that choice. Today is that day. I want to challenge you today as they sing this song. Don't grip the back of the chair. Let it go and let God. Make your decision today to choose to serve God. Be the man that God has called you to be. Be the woman that God has called you to be. Rise up. In Jesus' name.